Well, debate has started to move again in the legislature after the body adopted new rules for priority motions, but a promised filibuster isn't over yet. 3 News Now's Alex Whitney joins us live in studio with more. That's right, Mary. Priority motions were the target of yesterday's rule change, but they aren't the only way to filibuster. And today, opponents of LB 574 renewed their efforts to kill the bill banning gender affirming care. But the clock is ticking for the unicameral to pass certain bills. And if the delays continue, it will be taxpayers footing the bill while the legislature finishes its work. It's certainly been slowed down, but the weeks long filibuster effort by progressive senators isn't dead in the water just yet. We are not standing in the way of the legislature doing business, you are doing that. By choosing to dig in, by choosing to prioritize this egregious government overreach, that if it were any other issue than trans kids' medical care, everyone would be up in arms. On Tuesday, the five main senators behind the filibuster, Senators Megan Hunt, John and Michaela Kavanaugh, Jen Day, and Danielle Conrad, were faced with their second major setback after the body voted to suspend then adopt new rules regarding priority motions. To know the impact of this, it's important to know how priority motions work. There are three priority motions, and you can motion to bracket a bill, indefinitely postpone debate, or recommit it to a committee. Each time a motion is introduced, it's sent to the top of the speaking queue, and senators get 10 minutes to speak on the motion. Before the rules change, any senator could introduce as many of these motions as they wanted. It was a never-ending string of motions last week that kept supporters of LB 574 from testifying before a cloture vote was held on the last day of debate. Now the body as a whole can only introduce each of these motions once per debate, effectively ending the previous strategy of never-ending priority motions. Let's debate them on this floor. Let's get over this hump. Let's withdraw all the amendments that have just been dropped and let's debate the bills on their merits. A day after the rules change came into effect, debate was still glacially slow compared to normal years, but it was moving more than it has in recent days. But senators will need to move quickly to catch up to the number of bills normally passed in a regular session. In 2021, the last regular session, 215 bills were passed. To match that number in 2023, a little over five bills would need to be passed every day for the rest of the session. Well, a conversation Alex and I have had in the newsroom, and I thought it'd be prudent to have it here on set too, is about the potential consequences if this filibuster does continue this session. Absolutely. What are they? Well, there's, there's quite a few. The first one, obviously, they're not going to be as productive as they would be in normal years. Just like we said, 215 bills normally pass in a session around this time. Uh, or total, I should say, we don't have any bills passed so far this year. So the, the work is going to be quite a bit. The other thing that the senators are running into this year is we just recently passed a ballot initiative in our midterm election to require voter ID for our upcoming one. Because that was a ballot initiative, they are constitutionally mandated to address it and legislate it this year. So if they don't get it done during the regular session, which is going until about June 2nd, I believe, um, they're going to have to come back for a special session just to handle voter ID. That's something they cannot put off mm -hmm. until next year. That could cost as much as $10,000 a day. So that would be an expensive extra session for taxpayers. All right, Alex, keeping an eye on a lot of these angles. Thank you so much.